Hello, my name is Adam Moya. I am the program director for the Medical Laboratory Technician Program at St. Philip's College. I'll be going over our program and just kind of what medical laboratory technicians do out in the uh, job world. <laughs> Introduction. Again, so I am the program director for the Medical Laboratory Technician Program and also the phlebotomy program here at St. Philip's College. Background, I've been in the field for now close to, a little going over 10 years. I received my bachelor's degree in laboratory science in Texas A&M Corpus Christi. I worked in Corpus Christi for a bit while transferring to San Antonio and worked at Methodist Hospital for the bulk of my time. I worked you know, at the main hospital and then at different little outlying clinics, uh, working out just from working at the bench to running a section to becoming a supervisor and then a technical supervisor and then a ma laboratory manager and then now went into teaching. We're based out of St. Phillips College. St. Phillips College is in, we're at the main campus, so on 1801 Martin Luther King Drive and the school was founded in 1898. We are one of 11 allied health programs here at St. Philip's College. So medical laboratory scientists, medical laboratory technicians are also known as clinical laboratory scientists. They perform laboratory tests on patient samples to provide information needed to diagnose or monitor treatment. Examples of some common laboratory tests include tests to detect anemia, diagnose diabetes, strep throat, and provide transfusion to an accident victim. So professional duties, operating computerized instruments, identifying abnormal cells, assuring safe transfusion of blood products for patients, and also it can be helping with producing these blood products, culturing and identifying bacteria and vi viruses can also be fungi too, correlating test results with patient's condition, selecting and evaluating laboratory equipment, selecting, orienting, and evaluating employees, and monitoring the quality of testing. So have you ever wondered who conducts the detailed laboratory testing for your annual exam? And also who does the testing for, you know, when they send out levels for cholesterol, glucose, check your blood sugar, and who analyzes those results? Who conducts specialized testing for genetic disorders like sickle cell disease? How about those who identify an antibiotic resistant infection like methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, MRSA? and determine which antibiotic is required to save someone's life. Well, if you thought it was the doctor or a nurse or someone else you see at your doctor's office or in the hospital, you would be incorrect. Medical lab professionals provide up to 70% of patients' laboratory testing to physicians and also can be nurse practitioners, physician assistants, so they can provide an accurate diagnosis and treatment plan. Doctors rely on laboratory test results to make informed patient diagnosis. Patient history along with the physical signs and symptoms are vital, but most diagnoses need confirmation that only the lab tests can provide. The laboratory professional also contributes to wellness testing, guiding treatment, and monitoring a patient's progress. So training, so formal coursework in medical laboratory testing is a very small portion for doctors, nurses, pharmacists, physical therapists, occupational therapists, and biology graduates. Now for us, you know, that have gone through the laboratory training, formal laboratory training, you know, you have received training in the theory of almost over a thousand plus tests that are out there sources of interference, you know, what can interfere into this testing, and the connections between the test results and a diagnosis. So that is all of our main focusing of our studies. Medical laboratory scientists, also known as medical technologists or clinical laboratory scientists, have a batch 
bachelor's degree, and medical technology are one of the life sciences. Medical laboratory technicians complete a two-year associate's degree with similar courses in clinical practicum as the bachelor's, but there's less emphasis on highly complex techniques. So how do you become a medical laboratory professional? So to work as either a medical laboratory scientist or technician, you need to complete the program and also be certified by a board of certification. The most highly sought after one is the American Society for Clinical Pathology once you receive your degree. The best way to prepare for a certification exam is to complete the NACL's accredited program or clinical internship in medical technology. So in a hospital laboratory, there are two main departments. There's the anatomical side and the clinical side. The anatomical side deals with tissues and the disease processes that are occurring in tissues. So they look at the histology, cytology, and the autopsy sides. We do have a sister program for histology that deals with that section. Our program deals with the clinical side of the house. Clinical looks at the blood and body fluids and testing of those substances that you are taking out from the body. Now, under the clinical side of the house, we do have other sections that are performed. So we have blood bank, chemistry, coagulation, hematology, immunology, serology, microbiology, point of care, phlebotomy, and accessioning. So blood bank deals with, you know, the blood transfusion. So, so transfusing into patients, you know, packed red blood cells, platelets, plasma. Chemistry does with all the chemistry testing, you know, like electrolytes, glucose, cholesterol, things like that. Coagulation deals with clotting, you know, how well the patient is clotting. So especially when they're getting evaluated for surgery, you want to make sure the patient can clot well and you know, hopefully survive the surgery. Hematology looks at the red count, white counts, and all the different cells and how they are doing in the body. Immunology serology looks at, at infectious diseases like syphilis, rheumatoid arthritis, and other little things like that um, that can occur in patients and testing and screening for those. Microbiology looks at the microorganisms, so bacteria and viruses and fungi, and also parasites. Point of care is the realm of, look, we kind of look, look over the devices that are kind of done at the bedside of the patients. So these are smaller devices. Uh, we kind of have our, our umbrella over those to making sure that those are working properly and the staff are using them properly. And then phlebotomy accessioning. So phlebotomy is going out there collecting the blood samples and then accessioning or taking in all the samples that are coming from the hospital to be run down the laboratory. So the medical laboratory technician program at St. Philip's College was started in 1970. The medical laboratory technician program prepares health science professionals to perform analysis on blood and body fluids to enable a physician to diagnose and monitor treatment of diseases. Our graduates will earn an Associate of Applied Science degree. The Medical Laboratory Technician Program is accredited by NACLS, so that's the National Accrediting Agency for Clinical Laboratory Science. Any interested student must first apply for admission to the college and have completed the two prerequisite courses, and then they can apply for admission into the program. One of the prerequisites is Bio 2404, Human Anatomy and Physiology, and the other one is Math 1314, College Algebra, but a higher math will also work. All prerequisites must be completed with a grade of C or higher. For the application process, if you go to our website, so if you go to St. Philip's College website and search for a medical lab technician, you'll have all the steps there and what's needed for the application. It's also, you know, it has a whole checklist there. So we have our two prerequisites. There's also a minimum GPA that needs to be met. And we also do require the T's exam and it's a 65 or higher on the T's. Application deadline for admission is May 31st of every year. It is recommended students submit a complete application packet 
once prerequisites have been completed for consideration before the start of the fall. We start a new cohort every fall semester. Applications are reviewed and processed for consideration for the fall semester cohort. And we're also looking at starting doing interviews also. And we accept about 20 students annually. I also have a phlebotomy program. So if you just wanna learn just you know, how to become a phlebotomist, we do have a program too. It's a level one certificate. It can, can be completed in one to two semesters. There's six classes total. One of them is medical terminology. And if you've already taken medical terminology, then that's one less class to take. The other classes are the phlebotomy class itself, the phlebotomy clinical rotation, intro to health professions, technical calculations, and a phlebotomy seminar class. Our classes are only offered in the fall and spring semesters. They are flex courses, so they're only eight weeks in length. Majority of them are done online. Our only face-to-face -face class will be the actual phlebotomy class itself. It's on a Saturday, so there'll be eight Saturdays. And then your clinical rotation where you'll go to a hospital or clinic to do your rotation, and that's three weeks in length, Monday through Friday for eight hours a day. After completion of the program, you can work at a hospital clinic or a doctor or any place that, off, that employs phlebotomists and work as a phlebotomist. And if you do successfully complete our program, you are eligible to be certified and you can, you can be able to take the ASCP phlebotomy certification exam as a phlebotomist. Thank you for your time, and I believe I will be present for the Q&A section, so thank you.